What is up? I'm Marcel and welcome back to The Modern Filmmaker. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Multicam in DaVinci Resolve 16, as well as some of my favorite techniques for how I use the Multicam to help speed up your workflow. So I used to think that Multicam in DaVinci Resolve was a little limited and kind of annoying, but over time I find myself using it more and more, and I even find myself using it for things that I never thought I would use Multicam for in the past. So once you know how to work your way around it a little bit, it's pretty eye-opening as far as what it can do to improve your workflow. So I'm going to go over several different situations where I use Multicam, starting with interviews. Now if I pull in some clips that I know are all the same take. Um, this one here from the GH5, let me pull this one in from the 1DX Mark III and the audio I was getting from my Tascam DR40. Um, and now I have them all in my media pool. And to make this a multicam clip, if I select all of these and then I right click on one of the videos here and go up to create new multicam clip using selected clips. I'll click on that and it'll ask me a few questions. Number one, multicam clip name. What do I want to name this multicam clip? Now, I don't have to name it anything. I could just leave this name that it's given me, which is one of the file names plus multicam. But I'll go ahead and switch this to Whitney Multicam, or Whitney Interview. How about that? Because that's exactly what it is. And now when it's actually a multicam in my media pool, I'll know exactly what it is and where to find it. Uh, from there, it'll ask me for frame rate. 29.9 .9 is fine. Uh, that's what the project set in. And then the angle sync. And, and this is pretty much just asking you, how do you want DaVinci Resolve to sync these together? Because it will actually sync these together into the multi-clip for you. That's kind of the first awesome thing that I do love about the multicam in DaVinci Resolve is how well it syncs. So it has some different options here, asking in or out points. Like if all the cameras start at the same time, then DaVinci Resolve will just say, hey, I'll just use the endpoints to sync all these up and put them in a multicam for you. Um, out points, the same thing. If all these videos have the same out point, it'll just use the out point and sync all these clips up for you. Or time code, if all the, same, if all the cameras use the same time code, um, that's another way, of course. And you have sound and markers. I personally like to use sound. It's just super easy. I'll leave all the cameras rolling and ready to record sound. And that way, uh, they should line directly up with the mic that I also had set up in a third-party recorder. So I'll click sound. And then from here, it'll say angle name. And this is just asking you, what do you want DaVinci Resolve to name the different angles once they're in the multicam? Um, it could be sequential, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, or it could be the angle, like if you had an angle set in your metadata of a certain camera um, or the metadata of the camera itself. Um, like if it's Cam 1, Cam 2, or if it's the Ursa or the Canon, whatever metadata camera information is in there, uh, it'll take that information and uh, kind of set a file name for you. And then you have clip name, and that's what I like to use, clip or file name, because I know the GH5 uses these P and then a number sequence. Uh, the Canon uses the BD and then a number sequence. So I'll just go with clip name. That way I know what they're called and I know which ones they are. So from there, it'll also ask, move source clips to original clips bin. Now, if I have a pretty extensive um, project I'm working with, then I'll definitely leave this on, and it'll move all the clips into their own bin, uh, separate from all the other media that's in your media pool. So I'm gonna actually leave that selected so you guys can at least see what that looks like. And then I'll hit Create, it'll analyze, and put them in their multicam, and boom. Now we have our multicam sequence, you can see we have our three different clips, or we have our two different clips and our audio, and then we have our originals clip where we can go and find uh, the media that's actually in that multicam. So from here, if I go to edit, I can pull this multicam into the timeline. And let's say if you were just ready to multicam right away from this step, uh, if I just close this and you turn on your dual screen mode, right now it's on single screen, if you turn on your dual screen mode, on the left hand side, you'll see this little video kind of icon here. Looks like a video clip. And if you click this down, go down to multicam, and you'll actually be able to see your different takes in this multicam. And it's super simple. If I just start playing this video. I'm able to even get up and walk by myself. Boom. That's how My easy it is to cut. If I just click the clip, when I want it to cut, it'll just cut from there. Uh, one thing is you'll see that it also cut the audio. 
And if I, I don't want to cut the audio. Um, in certain situations, you may want to say, hey, go to this cam and go to that cam's audio. But I personally want to stick on just one type of audio, and that would be the audio from this task cam. So from now, I'm going to control Z to undo that and take a look at these three different options here on the bottom. Uh, at the bottom of the multicam, you'll see this to the left, it's a little video stream, and then you have in the middle of video stream and a music little note, and then just a music note. And you probably already guessed it. If I click this, it'll just cut the video when I tell it to cut. If I click this, and it'll do the video and audio like it just did. And if I go to this last one, it'll just cut the audio to whatever clip uh, I click on. So I'm actually gonna go back to this first, and then go back. And let's say from here. Unable to even get up and walk by myself. And then cut to the next clip. Boom. But my parents did make me get up and walk, and they made me eat even when I didn't want to. And then cut right and there. And as angry as I was. And it goes back. The hope I had in my heart. And one reason back. I love, I love the multicam, um, is because it's just so simple like that. I could just sit here and watch this whole interview and just simply cut back and forth. And by the time it's done, I'm pretty much done if it was a pretty seamless interview. Um, now, most interviews aren't seamless, but, uh, you know, when it is, this works out really well. Uh, but let's say I made a mistake and I need to go back to this clip here and change right. this. If you right click and then go to switch multicam clip angle, and then I can go back to this Canon 1DX Mark III and just say, yeah, let's just I stay mean, on that the whole time. Just on the rise and, the and now it won't change when it gets to that point. Now let me go into a couple more things just in this interview section uh, that I like to do to kind of make this a little more seamless for myself. So if I undo by hitting Control Z, and now we're back to the beginning, we haven't made any cuts here. I'm actually gonna go into this multicam. And you do that by right clicking and going to open in timeline. Now, if I wanna go back into the timeline, I'll need to click on this timeline. Uh, there's not really any buttons within this section over here that'll get me back. So remember that, when it's time to go back to the timeline, just double click the timeline and you'll go right back with your multicam in the track that it was in. So once again, I right click and go to open in timeline because I wanna change some things here. And the first thing I wanna change is I wanna get rid of the other audio clips. Um, this one here from the uh, Canon I want to get rid of, and also the one from the Panasonic GH5. Um, so to do that, to solo out, because right now everything's kind of grouped, I'll hold Alt and click on this audio here, and then I can either hit D for deactivate, uh, but in this instance, I just want it gone. So I'm just going to hit delete completely. And then if I come down here and do the same thing, hold Alt and hit that next audio clip from the GH5, I can do the same thing and backspace and delete that audio clip. And then what I, what I can do is take this task cam and if I hold shift, I can drag this up in the exact same place to the first audio. And from here also, we can kind of cut out a lot of this dead space um, for when I was setting up the cameras and you know asking Whitney how she felt, are you doing okay? And even in here, I can go ahead and right click and normalize this audio. Now this is kind of getting more into the audio side of things and the multicam side of things, but hey, I want to show you guys exactly what I would do in this situation. Um, and I'm going to come down here to this ITU-R where it'll uh, normalize to the minus 23 LKFS, which is the standard. Um, and again, I'll go back to there because my autosave kind of clicked me out of it. And you can see I go to the ITU-R and normalize. And now we've got a pretty loud sounding audio clip. Eating journey in the fitness industry in 2009. By 2011, I was competing. But it sounds pretty good. That's the Octava MK uh, H-012, something like that. Anyway, um, another thing about the multicam, and I'm sorry if it's a lot of information for you guys, but there's a lot to know. And once you know, then you're smooth sailing from there. So uh, in this multicam click, it's only coming out of the left side. I've actually got it in a stereo track, but it's a mono clip. And you can see that by this number two here that's on these audio tracks. And this number one down here was actually the audio track it was on, which DaVinci already put it in a mono um, track. So uh, what I can do is actually right click on this audio track, go to change track type two, and go to mono. And now if I play it back. Eating and doing extremely well on national level stages all over the country. We're in stereo, not really, we're in mono, but it's in the center and it's where it needs to be. And it's normalized. Um, and I can come over here and like I said before, kind of cut off some of this dead space. Let's see if I just drag this here, drag everything to the front. 
and then I'll scoot it all back. And you could do that in here, or you could actually do that with the actual multicam. It, it doesn't really matter. I just like to cut off the fluff. It makes me feel better. And then from here, we can go right back into the interview. And now we're back in the interview timeline, and we've got the audio sounding good. I was transported to Vanderbilt Medical Center to have emergency back surgery, to have metal rods and screws inserted into my spine. And then cut. After that, I was admitted to the trauma unit. There. Okay, you know what? That gap there in between her voice, um, in between her speaking parts, because she's actually reading her lines, um, it, it didn't sound that natural. Another reason I love multicam. So if I come down here and press B for the razor tool, and I do cut the audio where I switched over to the next clip, I can actually grab both of these, and let's say I wanna start right before she starts talking. I can drag it in there, come back, and then... ...and screws inserted into my spine. After that, I was admitted to... Boom, that's a much more natural pause. So this next one took me way too long to figure out, but it saved my life when I did figure it out. Uh, every week I edit and color a kid's program, but someone else kind of puts the multicam in a timeline and then sends me the XML from uh, either Premiere or Final Cut. I'm not even really sure. Uh, but so in my timeline, when I import their timeline, this is what it looks like. It's not in DaVinci Resolve's multicam format. I've got the program from the, the director board that day. I've got the multi-view. Um, I've got some lyrics. And then I've got all of these clips. Um, they're lined up with each other, but they're not in a multicam. And unfortunately, there's no way within the edit tab to just select all of these and say, you know, right click and then put in multicam. I tried putting them in a compound clip and turn the compound clip into a multicam and I'm just like, oh my gosh, what do I do? So what I found to do was I would go through and find each of these clips. Now this is mainly for organizational purposes. You don't have to do it this way, but I would find each one of these clips that's in this multicam sequence here, that's not yet a multicam, in my media bin and I would select them all. So let me, you know, let me just go ahead and do that real quick. All right, so now that I have all the clips selected, uh, I just right click and then create new multi-clam using selected clips. Now, again, I only find those all just to make it uh, a little more organizational. So again, I'll go to use the sound. It doesn't really matter though what you choose here, other than the name. I do like to name it whatever, let's say this is a certain song. So we'll just say song one, let's just say that. Uh, and then we'll go with the clip name for the angle name, and then from there, I'll just go to create, and I will we'll leave on move source clips to original clips bin, because that's mainly why I, I chose to select all the files. You don't actually need to do that in this situation. I could have just, you know, uh, selected two of them and made a multicam, and this still would have worked. So let me go to create, and it'll analyze the clips. Boom. And now I have a multicam song one. Now, this multicam may not be synced up how they sent it to me, and that's the problem. I could sync it with the audio and even make my own multicam, but as you can see, they kind of have things laid out here for me in a certain way with an intro, certain takes from certain songs, they got bumpers, uh, and then they'll put in other stuff. Um, so I need to keep it kind of in the organization that they had it as far as when things are laid out. So what I'll do is I'll actually, I don't need the lyrics, I don't need the program cut, I don't need the multi uh, view cut. So I'll go ahead and delete those and I'm left with those nine cameras that I just selected and put into a multicam. So I'll actually grab all of these cameras and then I will control X to cut and then I'll go into the multicam, open in timeline, right click and open in timeline and then from here I'll select all of these, delete and then control V and paste the original multicam that they sent me. And it's really that simple. Now, if I go back into our timeline, and then all I have to do is drag in our song one multicam, and over the song one multicam, if I do our double view and multicam, boom. I have our complete multicam in the lineup that they wanted. So I can go through here and just start cutting you know, cut the drummer in, and then 
I cut the kids in, dancing. I cut the jib in, doing its crane motions. You know, I cut some more kids in. And then, you know, this nice wide shot in the front. You know, and you guys know how it goes. You know, you just keep on cutting. I don't even have the sound on right now, so I'm not really sure where I'm making the cuts. But that's kind of how simple it is when you have, you know, let's say a concert or something like that. And somebody else kind of set it all up for you and just sent you the project. And you're like, oh my gosh, I get it. These are lined up in the timeline, but I need them in a multicam. It's that easy. And like I said before, I could have just grabbed two of these clips and said create multicam and then still copied in all those other cams. Um, I just did it that way so I could get all those clips into an original clips folder uh, just to help with organization. Now, if I go to the next song and I'm looking for the clips from that song, I, I don't have to sift through these clips. They're already gone in their own bin. And so now I can go through and get the clips from the next song and do the same multicam thing and bada bing, bada boom. Now, here's, here's one more awesome tip that is just a lifesaver to me um, because sometimes you just don't think about these things until it's too late. But let's say I got this whole thing cut together and, you know, we got lights all over the place. I got quite a bit of color grade to do on something like this, quite a bit. And uh, am I going to go through and color grade each clip? I mean, some clients don't ask for that. This is a client that does not ask for that. They're like, hey, this is for kids. We want it to look good. But Marcel, don't do your Hollywood thing. Just like where you have to go through every frame and, you know, perfectionist. Don't do it. Just get it to us, please, before Sunday. And so... <laughs> Uh, what what I do to color these clips, you know, because by the end of this, I'm going to have a trillion clips, especially with the kids program. You're cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting. So what I do is right click, open in timeline. And from here, what I'll do is I'll just go up. Obviously, we've got camera nine here at the top. So I'll find a good shot in camera nine. Let's say this one right here. And I'll go to the color tab and I'll color that clip. And then I'll come back, I'll mute that clip or disable that track, and then I'll have camera eight on top, and then I'll color camera eight, you know, bada bing, bada boom, color. Then I'll come through to camera seven, bada bing, bada boom, color. Because, of course, all colors do is turn off the contrast. So then I'll go into, you know, camera six, same deal. Uh, color tab and voila, color. And so that's how simple it can be. Um, of course, with something like this, the audio is a little bit uh, different of a situation. I would probably just get the track from them because this is audio from the control room, um, which may have been the audio they want. It may not be. So in this situation, I would probably go back to the timeline once they send me the the correct audio you know from the studio mixed and everything come in here and just replace the audio file that's sitting under here and you know i could alt and click that delete or backspace don't delete because that'll scrub everything in that time frame so yeah that in a nutshell is multicam and the different things you can do with it now other ways you can use this is in podcasting if you are the video editor of a podcast Podcasts are a really awesome and quick thing you can do in multicam. Just put the two or three, however many cameras you have for the, the podcast, put those in, cut them together. And as you're watching it, you can just cut, cut, cut. And also, you can kind of trim things up in between uh, to kind of help people out. Because some podcasters are like pros and some kind of, you know, drag things on and have a lot of ums and pauses. And this is a cool way that you can not only cut together a multicam quick, but you can quickly kind of like cut out little mistakes and kind of keep track of the, the smoothness and the quality and the overall flow of whatever kind of edit you're trying to put together. So there's a lot of other ways you can do this. Leave some comments down below of how you guys would use this or might be using this or are going to go on to use this now that you know how to use it. And also, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns just about this video or about anything else, about what other things you want to see on the channel, leave them down below. And please don't forget to like this video. You know, you guys are always liking my videos. It's awesome. And if you didn't like the video, like the video anyway. It would really help the channel out. And feel free to subscribe. I'm always making videos on DaVinci Resolve. And as always, I'm Marcel, and this has been The Modern Filmmaker. I'll see y'all next time. Peace!